Just under five minutes before we get this show underway, we're going to be talking all things STEM. We've got thousands of ideas here. Is your idea here? Boys, we ready to go? Yeah, we're good. Alrighty, shouldn't be long now.
everyone, I'm Lachlan. And I'm Kathleen. And this is the Make My Idea Show, a one-off live event we'll be bringing to life a whole heap of ideas submitted by you. We'll show you these ideas as either an illustration, 3D design, or real life prototype. And our team of experts over here will explain all the science and techie stuff behind these ideas. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment in the live stream and we'll try to get to them throughout the stream. And of course, at the end of the show, we'll be announcing the winners of the Samsung Ideas Lab, where one lucky person and one lucky school will be walking away with a range of awesome Samsung gear. So stick around for that. That sounds pretty awesome. And we've actually had like 5,000 ideas, over 5,000 ideas sent in already over the last couple of weeks. But don't worry, it's not too late. We'd still love to hear your ideas. So let us, let us know what you'd like to see invented in the comments section. I've got to say, with all the entries so far, there's no doubt that there are a lot of awesome and creative young Australians out there. And uh, maybe, uh, maybe a few crazy ones too, in a good way, of course. I mean, we've got ideas involving a teeth brushing nanobot, flying dog machines, solar powered battery charging clothing, some really smart recycling solutions, and everything in between. And, uh, um, Lachlan, what are, you, what are you doing now? <laughs> I'm eating one of the ideas right now, Kath. It's uh, edible burrito tape, and we made it from rice paper, so no more eating tin foil on your burritos. It's great. Awesome idea. Thanks for that, guys. Um, there are actually a bunch. There's actually a whole other bunch of ideas around food. So to go through some of them, we brought through two experts from Questacon to go through some of them. Hi, Jesse and Helen. Thanks for joining us today. There's some really cool stuff that we've had a little of a peek at, um, but we don't quite understand. So it's great to have you here. Um, before we go through the few ideas we have, can you tell us a bit about yourselves? My name is Helen, and this is Jesse, and we're from Questacon, the National Science and Technology Centre. It's an interactive, hands-on science centre based in Canberra. Yeah, but we're part of the Smart Skills team, so we get to travel all over Australia and help young people like yourselves innovate and prototype their ideas. And we're super excited to see what you, the young people of Australia, have come up with today. Awesome, sounds good. So let's go through more of these ideas, or more specifically food and drink ideas. Wonderful, so the first one we have off the rank is Trey Clark. He came up with a cordial tap. Now what this tap is, is um, high, high concentrate crystals that sit inside a tap mechanism. And when you put your cup underneath, it has an RFID chip that recognizes you would like cordial. And cordial comes straight out of the tap into your glass, which is fantastic. That's so cool. Yeah. Speaking of cool, we also have an idea from Andrew in Varsity College. Uh, came up with a refrigerating bottle, which we call the Brrrr Otto. So the idea behind this, uh, you know, you've got drink bottles that already exist, that have double walls in them, and they keep liquids, you know, hot or cold. But this is taking it to the next level. This thing is USB charged, it's got a built-in refrigeration unit. So you can take this thing camping and, you know, get yourself a cold drink anytime. Excellent. Now, another one that we really liked was the GroomBot bot by Michaela. Now, the GroomBot is a nanotechnology bot that helps you brush your teeth, do your hair, uh, daily tasks that, you know, maybe you don't have the time to do or maybe you don't have the accessibility to do. So we think this is an excellent use of nanotechnology and one we're really excited to potentially see in the future. And one other idea that we had from Sebastian, uh, this kind of concept was an insect repellent that you spray on your food. But the concept that we have here is taking that and integrating it into the stuff that you're eating off. So this is the fly away plate. It uses sound waves to repel insects so they don't land on your food. So I think that's a really great idea. You know, uh, you're at a picnic and you don't have to worry about shooing flies away from your food all the time. Maybe Lachlan, it can keep your burrito safe. We'll have to see. All right, so one of the people who helped bring these ideas to life as the designs you just saw is Tyler. And he's someone who's made a career out of science, technology, engineering, and math, otherwise known as STEM. So let's go ahead and meet him. I always wanted to do something to do with drawing, but I wasn't sure what. So this is kind of perfect. This is pretty cool. My name's Tyler. I am a concept artist at Finch. I went to university and I studied a Bachelor of Creative Technologies, which was the degree which allowed us to pursue any interests we wanted. I draw a lot on paper, creating concepts for the various jobs that we have on, coming up with various ideas that the producers need and that the directors want. Here we have Tyler, and what exactly do you do? I'm a concept artist, so I draw ideas and little illustrations for any of the problems or ideas that we get given to us. 
We have some of these concepts up on the wall. We've got the Memory Foam Helmet by Alison Noble, All Terrain Kayak by Kylie Prestwick. Yeah, we've got some really cool things like the off-road walking frame from Sophie Bert Brunton, uh, the self-kicking flippers from Kia Jade. Over here we've got these uh, sort of like magnetic bike suspensions and this is an idea that's been sent in from Ben Beard. So Tyler, how do you get into concept design? Uh, so there are a lot of different degrees and courses you can take to yep. get into it, but the key is probably just to start practicing, start designing. If you have an idea, just get into it and start making it. And what exactly are you working on here? Um, so one of the ideas that we had submitted was a ski board, which is a snowboard that transforms into a pair of skis. Very cool. Um, and so we've kind of come up with an idea that they could lock together and then split apart if you, you wanted whichever one you wanted. So in the, what I think is really cool is that you're able to uh, make a digital prototype. Uh, so uh, you guys said you can change things up as you're designing things. Do you reckon that your design did it change much as you were making it? Um, it probably went through a few different versions. That's why um, we usually do a lot of rapid prototyping. We start with a lot of really rough sketches and then from there we kind of refine it back to a point that we're happy with and then we'll get like renders and stuff like that. So how many times do you reckon this design changed before it got to this stage here? Uh, it can change a lot. Sometimes you'll kind of nail it the first go, but then a lot of times you can also do it ten times over to get it right. So I suppose like when you're working digitally, it's much easier to redo something rather than making an actual physical prototype. That's really cool. So what about these things here? They look kind of like ski poles? Yeah, so we had the idea that ski poles are probably going to be quite inconvenient if you had a snowboard and you didn't want to use them. So what if you had anti-gravity ski poles, which remove the pole part of the ski poles? That's really cool. That, that is super cool. Now, how likely is this to become an actual thing? Because I kind of want one, so how does that happen? Can it happen? Okay, Particularly so, the yeah, the, like, the board bit into the skis, I reckon that's completely doable. Okay. Uh, but the, the anti-gravity, man, it's, it's the stuff of science fiction. It's something, it's kind of like the holy grail of, uh, you know, physics of being able to just make things float as you will. At the moment we're not quite there. We still need more research. So I think in the interim maybe you could put like uh, like kind of jet rockets in them so, so when you sort of push down it pushes back so you can still get some of that momentum forwards. And um, so I was just looking behind you we've got like another we got the oh, power wow. nap going on. Can you talk us through this? Uh, yeah, so this one looks like this is an idea that is being sent in by James from Cranbrook School in New South Wales. So what happens is uh, it's a sleeping bag, you're sleeping in it and you're getting nice and warm and outside it's really, really cold. And the differences between those temperature, we're able to generate a little bit of electricity from it. At the moment, the, this kind of technology is relatively inefficient, so with some more prototyping, with some more research, I think this could definitely be something we'll be seeing on the shelves in a few years' time. So you go out camping and then overnight you don't have to worry about plugging your phone in because just from uh, you sleeping, you can like charge your phones. What would you have to study to make this a reality? A few different careers I think would go into this kind of thing. Um, in terms of the t science and technology, stuff like engineering, physics, electrical engineering especially, but also there's the design aspect of it. Yeah. So you could go down either of those paths, I think. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, now how to turn these concepts into a prototype, we're going to go over to Lachlan and Pat. The future for robotics is quite amazing and everything is always changing so quickly. My name's Patrick, I'm a senior technologist here at Finch. So people often ask what is a technologist exactly, basically like an engineer, but we have to be an expert in everything. Once you've got the idea, having it show up on TV, it's fantastic. It's not magic, there's something underneath all of it that makes it work and it's really exciting to ensure that the people that are in these STEM fields have that understanding. Because if you don't understand how something works, you can't look at it critically. Welcome to the workshop everybody for our first idea. Um, Ethan Woodward came up with an idea of uh, having a tee show him where to kick the ball so he can easily score a goal every time. We got Pat, our applied technologist here to show us uh, what he's got. Yeah, thank you. Um, so if you want to kick a goal, you have to know where the goal is. Yep. Um, so from a, from a tech point of view, uh, we need to think about sensors and GPS and uh, compasses and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got some, some stuff here to, to demonstrate what's going on with uh, a prototype that 
fulfills that idea. Sure thing. Um, and because this is how uh, actual tech development works, we tend to work in stages. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got a bunch of prototypes here on the table to show you. All right. Uh, and this is our first one. Doesn't look like much, perhaps. Yeah, pool noodle and a uh, football are a few different things, but hey. Really? Right. Can you yes. talk about why you've chosen to use a pool noodle as your first prototype? Yeah, yeah. certainly. So a uh, any kind of tech thing, um, you know, we've got the, the outside of it, we know that it's supposed to look like a ball at the end, mm -hmm. um, and then what we need to figure out is just exactly what it is that goes inside. Um, so this is not so much caring about the outsides, um, just looking at the electronics. Um, yep. So we've got some sensors in here, uh, a compass and an initial measurement unit. Um, and as I'm turning this around, you can probably notice yeah, that it always stays the same color on the same side. Yeah. So red being north? Red is north, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and blue is south. All right. So yeah. in, a, in a more complete version, it might know with GPS sensors or things like that, that the goal is that way. Um, right. Doesn't so much help if you're on the other team, but then you can use multiple colors. You know, red is yours, blue is mine, and vice versa. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And then you moved on to this smaller ball like prototype. This is yeah. looking a little bit more this like what we were about in sports. Um, it's not really full size unless you, you know, look at it. Really right? okay. It's a fun size. Um, but this is, yeah, it's a step up. We're starting to get into something that is recognizably ball shaped, mm -hmm. um, and we've got a whole heap more LEDs. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you can see. And what's this uh, exterior made out of? Yeah, so um, because we've got a lot of tech here in the workshop to, to use and to experiment with, uh, we've gone ahead and printed this out of a flexible uh, 3D filament. Okay. So it's, it's kind of like a rubber, kind of like a real uh, real ball. What's the, the benefit of using 3D printing in prototyping? Yeah, yeah, look, um, if, if nothing else, uh, we're all just slightly lazy. And it's really <laughs> nice to have a machine that uh, yeah, sits there yeah. and, and does all the work for you uh, while you go and do something else. Um, it's also fantastic if you've got to make lots of the same thing, um, and there are you know, all sorts of benefits to 3D printing, different materials, um, different techniques. That's very responsive too, changes like almost instantly. Alright, and then yeah. you've got something more here, what else have you got? got? More. So now that we have figured out this is the sort of insides, the electronics that we needed, mm -hmm. um, our, our next step was to look at how do we make the outside really impressive. Um, not just to have it sort of all shaped, um, yeah. but to be able to light up just like this and display any sort of thing on the screen, mm -hmm. on the, the surface of the wall. Um, so over here on the computer, this is just um, a bit of an example of the sort of stuff that we do here. This is a 3D model of how the final ball uh, would look. Um, and you can see this is just half of the ball on the screen, um, but there's lots of electronics on the inside. Um, and then on the other side, we've got some lots and lots of LEDs. Uh, very cool. So one of the challenges that uh, we have with, with CAD modeling and just designing things on the computer is that we have to transition it to the real world. Yeah. Um, and so this third prototype is is a test of can we build the outside and have it look good. So you've got some different uh, material here as well. So it's not mm -hmm. this 3D printed uh, material. It's got the 3D printed frame. Is that yes. right? Like a skeleton, and then um, some more fabricy outers and uh, a bit of foam there to make it a bit soft, so it's looking a little bit more ball-like. Uh, and then we can also see on the inside what that would look like as well. But I believe we've got uh, a fully formed ball here, is that correct? Yep, so the last prototype here um, is our final one. This is our full-sized rugby ball. So sick. There you go. That's Whoa. the <laughs> so it's one Oh, that's fantastic. That's Sorry, and it's similar to the ball, when you move it, it keeps uh, keeps its orientation, yep, lights up. Um, oh, it's got a few different features here, this is fantastic. Oh! This, <laughs> this looks so good. So it's like the whole uh, red and south, blue and north kind of thing, but there's the grey in between, yeah? Yep, yep, absolutely. And uh, if you need to, uh, you know, kick that goal, it helps to have something to help you visualise it. Um, so you can imagine this we're able to tell you exactly where it is you're meant to kick it. Yeah, very cool. I can see applications using it for like, um, you know, coach writing messages or something on the wall. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, of course guys, I want to make sure to let you guys know to stay in for the live stream. We've got a giveaway at the end of the same time here of everyone that entered. Of course, we're going to be announcing the winner at the end. Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for showing us all this technology. It's no awesome. Really yeah, look, we, we have a lot of fun here. This is obviously sports and games. Um, we've got some ideas coming up that are a bit more serious. It's mm -hmm. all more serious problems. Catch. Thanks.
next slide, please. So we've got some more serious ideas here with Ben. I'm talking through them. So a lot of the, uh, the submissions that we were getting were really focused on environmental um, friendliness sort of things, so renewable energies, dealing with waste and that sort of stuff, which is awesome. So three of them that we're talking about now. Uh, the first one is called the Everlasting Tissue Box, and that comes from Mandeep and Mara. Now, their idea was, or what they were very concerned about, was that their mother was spending far too much time and money refilling the tissue boxes, and so they wanted to find a way to, to help that situation. So we thought we'd take that a step further and really think of it from like an environmental point of view. So how this guy works is you feed it in kind of like a paper shredder, uh, so any type of paper rubbish, and it goes through a process where it gets broken down, and then it outputs all the tissues your heart desires. So that one's pretty awesome. Another one here, this one's called the litter bug. Now, Courtney Sullivan, her idea was a can of spray that would expel nanobots, which could eat trash. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a good idea, except we thought that it might be slightly unsafe giving kids uh, a spray bottle of nanobots. So we thought we'd build a bin which was fully contained, that could open and close, and same process, breaks down the rubbish and helps the environment. It's all green and all good. Uh, the last one is the hair bin. The hair bin, apparently it is, it's hard to ask people to go and put their stuff in the rubbish bin uh, to, to cut down littering. How this works is basically it's a rubbish bin that comes to you when you beckon it. So you give it a wave or you call out to it and it flies over to you in sci-fi fashion and you can put your rubbish away just like that. Excellent. That last idea was by Alina. Uh, thanks for that idea. All of these ideas seem like they're a bit, you know, in the future. How can we, what are we studying to get to this point? Is this any of this realistic? Yeah, I mean, as a start, uh, going into robotics, computer programming, uh, doing some engineering, these are the kind of subjects that you'd be able to study to be able to go into these fields. And it's absolutely possible. Uh, nanotechnology is something that we're using at the moment, especially in the field of medicine. Uh, you've got these nanobots that you know, doctors can use to do targeted drug delivery, to do you know, cell regeneration and that kind of thing. Uh, and you could combine that and do some bioengineering because they've actually discovered this fungus in Southern America which can actually break down plastic. So potentially, you could combine these, this fungus with some nanobots, put them in this bin, and then they can break down all this trash. But uh, I think maybe you just would want them to be non-replicating because I think that's where it could get a little bit dicey. Yeah, so another one of our really common submissions was everyone wanted a backpack that could charge their phone. So I would wow, use that. Yeah, totally. So obviously a lot of kids going to school and running out of batteries. So it, not only is it possible, it's actually available. So we thought um, another way to take that a step further is to have like a solar powered backpack. So you can oh, attach cool. something like this onto the front or onto the top and it'll basically feed a battery back, which could charge your phone. And it so plugs into the backpack. Correct. That is, so. that is incredible. I need one of those. This is not so I have, can we get more of these concepts into prototypes? We can. So Tyler and I and the design team get the uh, privilege of dreaming up these weird ideas, and then we can just output them to the engineering guys and make it their problem to actually make it happen. So Matt will tell you more about that. No, it's fine. My name is Matt and I'm Junior Applied Technologist here at Finch. I see Applied Technologist as a job role, helping people in the way that the world's moving in design, creativity, in technology, just bringing those things together to create stuff for the future. I work in the tech workshop most of the day, prototyping, using the 3D printer, operating the CNC machine, the laser cutter, and a lot of design work on CAD. I know from a young age I was always wondering how things worked this is where the world's going in design, innovation, creativity, robotics, stuff like that. It's a great place to be. Okay, so Matt, you've got a bunch of prototypes here for us, all to do with the helmet, uh, a smart helmet, and this idea was submitted by Alison Noble. Yeah, so Alison had the great idea of a smart helmet that could fit to your head perfectly. So her, her idea originally used memory foam, and it had a thing where if you dropped it or if you fell over, it would notify one of your carers or something like that, just for safety. So we thought that was a great idea, amazing. Um, and we have some really smart helmets we've prototyped up here. But before we get to the good stuff, we have to go through the process. Mm -hmm. So um, we started by just thinking, can we actually tighten a helmet to your head? Can we make it work? So we've got a little uh, 
simple prototype here. Obviously, it's not a helmet, but it was just to actually test that we could take the uh, tightening mechanism out of a bike helmet and make it actually work. So these are steps you have to go through in the, in the design process. Sorry, with this one, is that just a simple motor that's um, working there? Yeah, so we've, uh, we've got a servo motor in there, which is a motor that only turns 180 degrees, and we've actually modified it to let it uh, go further. So um, we've got some 3D printed parts here that have uh, coupled it to the actual bike tightening mechanism that lets us do that, that lets us actually convert the motor turning into that tightening. So that was a good little design that we made. Um, the second prototype that we stumbled across was uh, this self-tightening chin strap one. Now, um, this is uh, kind I love of the a, helmet choice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we thought, oh, what doesn't have a tightening mechanism at the back? Well, a kid's helmet with a chin strap. Yeah. yeah. So this okay. is a bit of a uh, low-tech, uh, 3D printed uh, tightening mechanism that is a bit noisy. Kind of nearly might take your head off, but um, yeah. So it's all it's all steps that are necessary in order to get to your final actual good product. So, gotcha. Yeah. That's a great proof of concept. Yeah, and yeah. so this one, similarly, it's using a motor, but it's winding a string up. Is that yeah. Correct? So we've um, actually got a motor with uh, strings which are coupled to the chin straps and a few 3D printed uh, straps go on there. Beautiful. Actually gotcha. Gotcha. So yeah, um, just more of the design work we're doing here. Um, now our third one is a bit more refined. Uh, it's okay. a self-tightening helmet that has a touch sensor on the side. So oh. if I just turn this on, um, you can see that when you tap this tap sensor, like that. Oh, sick! Yeah, see. Can we can we try it in person? Well, you sure can. I don't want to, but Lachlan, you want to do it? Sure. This is it's safe. It's approved. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go for it. Okay, so on, and then it's on the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Just one tap on the side, a bit further forward. A little bit this way. Oh wow, that's yeah. sick! It actually and, does fit to your head. And you just well. like tighten up there, yeah. yeah Easy. Yeah. yeah, so just one more tap to. Yeah, so that worked out kind of well. Uh, Not bad. Compare that to this old model. So that will just keep running. Yep. Compare that to this old model, it's a bit of an improvement. And um, this is an example of how we can 3D print parts and uh, paint them nicely and get them looking really professional in a low profile on something that we make. Yeah. Um, cool. Now, the most exciting helmet, in my opinion, is this. This is where we bring the knock detection into it. So this helmet knows when it's been picked up and it knows when it's hit the ground. Um, and it actually can talk to a computer or send messages to a phone or to a loved one if you get in an accident. So I think it's really great for safety. So if we just pick it up, it'll know it's been picked up and then it'll turn red and send a notification when it hits something. So if you've, got a, um, if you've got a kid that uh, uh, is maybe riding a bicycle and you're a worried parent, if this is on your kid's helmet, um, it's going to notify you if they fall over and hurt themselves. And I believe we've had a question from the comments. So uh, if this runs out of batteries, is there some way that we can recharge it or something like that? Uh, yes, there is actually a charger in here that we charge it by. It's the same as uh, any of your simple phone chargers, micro USB cables. So okay, yeah, yeah it, it has a battery in there and we charge it um, from a phone charger. So Wonderful. yeah, it's great. Very cool. And I understand this isn't the only thing you've got to show us as well. No, it's not. Um, staying on the safety front, we also had a few ideas that were to do with safety in the kitchen, which I thought was great. Um, if you've got hot pots and pans around lying on the stove, sometimes uh, they're very dangerous because mm -hmm. if you forget they're there, you walk away from the kitchen for a while, you go back, pick them up, maybe you're going to burn yourself. So okay. um, what we've done to these is painted them in thermochromic paint. So what this does is it's a paint that goes clear when it becomes hot. So if I demonstrate, oh, that is oh, wow. sick. Yeah. So that's got a red surface underneath, and what's happened is it's got hot from a. We've got a tank of hot water here, and it's actually gone clear when it's uh, gotten hot. So if you leave this on a stove, it's going to be red. Well, these are going to be red. Um, and that's, oh, yeah, so that's, that's awesome. That's really helpful if you're in the kitchen and uh, you've left something there. It's a really good visual way to know that uh, something's not safe to touch. So yeah. Wonderful. Oh, yeah, what an great. excellent prototype. I feel like this has got a lot of applications in the real world. I mean, you yeah. see this kind of technology with things like mood rings, which aren't exactly yeah, a new exactly. technology, yeah. but applying it in a different way, I think, is a really exactly. cool Exactly. This stuff's already been used in the real world. Uh, there's some examples of using it, as you said, mood rings, but more in a visual sense, more because it looks cool. But this is just a great way to use that technology in a way that makes it safer for the people. It's great. Absolutely. Great safe application in the kitchen. I think we've got a couple more ideas back over on this table. Yeah, so we had um, 
Oh, these ideas, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so we've got yeah. um, a few that were sent through that we've drafted uh, pictures of. Uh, we had the scan bandage. Now this one was made by Liam Ring, and what it was is a, like a cast that has a whole bunch of sensors in it, and it actually monitors your arm and sends uh, things through to your phone to tell you how that's working. So that's fantastic. You can monitor your progress and healing. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a really cool idea for you know improving your medical improvement. Yeah, uh, probably much better than a cast as well because you can see like updates and when you can take it off. And Absolutely. Yeah. Plus, you know, it's just a bit. Cooler. Yeah, it looks cooler, <laughs> at least in the sketch, so that's for sure. Um, another one that we have is the Mood Maker. Now, what this is, is a device that sits in your room and it analyzes the, the vibe of the room, whether you're having a good time or maybe having a, a bad time. It can use things like uh, smart technology on your wrist or um, sense sort of maybe the tone of the sentences in the room around you, and then it will pick a soundtrack. Uh, now, I really like this one because nothing makes me feel more happy than when you're listening to the radio and the perfect song comes on. I feel like this would just theme your whole life, which is just excellent. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got one more, I believe. Yeah, so the last one is the building rescue net. So what this is, is a net that uh, pops out the bottom of a building if somebody falls off the top. Now, this kind of technology already exists, so we took it to the next level. Uh, we were thinking that maybe well into the future, blue sky, uh, we could make it out of some anti-grav thrusters oh, and put like a casual, okay. yeah, an yep. energy field on the bottom so that we can, you know, save people without it having to be a physical net, which is pretty fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Now I think we've got a couple of questions from the audience. Yeah. Um, so, so we've had, sorry, we've had a question on the uh, thermochromic paint. So yep. it actually uh, clears up uh, when it gets hot at about 31 degrees Celsius. Uh -huh. There's different paints that react to different temperatures. Cooling. But um, yeah, so that started cooling. So uh, on some occasion, you can actually make it hot enough with your hands to uh, go clear up and turn red like that. But yeah, you can get a lot of different paints with different properties, anything you need, really. So that's great. Perfect. Cool. Alrighty, and I believe we've got uh, one more final yeah. thing. So um, one other really exciting idea that we're excited to perform for the first time is this uh, surf suit. Okay, so what this is, is uh, a life-saving device. This is a wetsuit that has inflation built into it. The idea is that the surf strap, like the oki strap that is attached to your leg, if that breaks, you won't have anything to float and hold on to. Yeah. Um, so what they've done is they've built in a, like a gas canister so that it will inflate and keep you afloat. Now, you've prototyped this one here, but no one's actually tested it out yet, is that right? Yeah, never been done before, so I'm good. <laughs> All right, well, let's see if it works, I guess. Uh, here we go. So it should inflate from the chest area, right? That's what we're hoping for, oh, yes. Alright, here we go. Wow, that's tight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, perfect. Uh, I didn't think that would work, so I'm very impressed. <laughs> I think that's going to keep you afloat if you uh, fall off your surfboard. If you don't lose your ribs. Uh, <laughs> so that was an excellent idea that we had there. Yeah, very cool. Cool. So, um, apart from all this, apart from all these uh, concepts and uh, illustrations and design work, uh, we actually at Finch uh, move it on to production in um, industrial labs. So, we're going to show you a bit about that. My proudest moment was probably when we built the most powerful arm. It was a petition signing robot arm to help raise awareness for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It signed something like 32,000 signatures in support of better funding for research into the disease. It was probably the first and most ambitious tech project where we just came up with the idea, had absolutely no idea if it could even be done and then committed to building it. Watching that actually complete to the success that it did uh, was definitely the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Now we've been reading, we've been reading chat, and uh, we've noticed a few questions about a VR treadmill. I've personally tried one, so I know it exists. But how does it work? So we get these VR headsets like for video games, and then you're sort of strapped into this station around the waist. Uh, so your feet are actually on a platform. It's super slippery, uh, is one of the models, and this way you're able to kind of run on the spot. Uh, there could be future models of this happening. So this is, we've already started to see this technology come through. Excellent. And now what are all these other ideas that we've got going on here? Yeah, so these are some other ideas that people have submitted. Uh, over here we've got a uh, solar sort of automatic hat broom. It's solar powered. 
So as the sun hits it, the broom's able to kind of adjust and move to where you need it most. Got a bit of a retro flare with propeller and it's able to generate some extra power. Uh, we've also got this idea that was sent in by Liveroo from Rangeville in Queensland, which is an automatic hair trimmer. This is super cool. So it seems that you've got an app, you choose the hairstyle that you want, it uploads to the hair trimmers, and then all you have to do is move over your head and it automatically adjusts the distance from which it needs to cut. So it means that you, know, you can save time and money, just plug in the hairstyle and away you go. Uh, this one here is uh, the Holo Gear. So the original idea was submitted by Luke Richardson from Ashwood High School in Victoria. Uh, and his idea was a holographic shirt that could change the design. But what the concept team have gone with is a solar powered shirt, which is able to uh, just change the transitions of what on the is on the shirt. So changing the color and the pattern and that kind of thing. So it means you could have a wardrobe, a limitless wardrobe for your shirts. That is freaking awesome. Yeah. Now speaking of fashion, we've got all these bags here. What is so special about these bags? Ah, so Charlotte from Charlotte Simpson from New South Wales uh, had this idea for a handbag with a fingerprint scan. Uh, okay. We assume that's like a, a lock, so we built one. Okay. Uh, little, little fingerprint scanner. We press it on. It opens. Press it off. And yes. hopefully, so it's, just... it's hard to open. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So it's just a simple little thief stopping device. Someone takes your, your thing. That's very handy. That's good. That's yeah. really I really like cool. it. So what about what that, that one there? Uh, so this one, I mean, this one you can walk away with. No one will know. But this one is like a car, like a car alarm. So you walk away, you've left your handbag, you've forgotten it. It turns on. Uh, and then if you like disturb it, it'll be. It'll like a car alarm. It's very interesting. Yeah. I guess we shouldn't try that. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Too loud. Too loud. We want you to know that the winners are coming really soon, but we've got one last thing to look at, and that is this bag. Now, what does it do? So this one here is a bag that I it uses an electrostatic, an electromag electromagnet. Uh, so when you uh, squeeze the top, you'll see the lights come on. This means it's activated. It activates the magnet, which means it's gone. The bag is going to be super attracted to any metal object. So if you try to lift it away, it's not going to be very easy to take that. And then all you have to do is ah, activate it that's yeah, cool. to turn the magnet off. Oh yeah, that is that is really cool. These have been some great ideas, and now it's time to get the to get to the exciting part, and that is the winners. But first, here's a short clip. Evolving at that edge of possibility is probably the most exciting thing you can do. This is where the world's going in design, innovation, creativity, robotics. So this is kind of perfect. Finch is top of the line production company. As well as that, they've got this passion for putting engineers in the same room as visual effects artists. STEM is a big part of that push. The most challenging part is coming up with things that have never been done before. Seeing an idea go all the way through from genesis to completion, and that's really the most fun part of the job. People talk about STEM as not just one discipline. It's not magic. There's something underneath all of it that makes it work, and it's really exciting to ensure that the people that are in these STEM fields have that understanding. Because if you don't understand how something works, you can't look at it critically. So an example of some of the problems we face on a day-to-day -day basis, we have this machine called the CNC machine. This machine needs something to cool it. First it started off with drawing an idea and then modelling it in a 3D software program. I'm actually currently printing out second iteration to it, which has a little tensioning screw. One of the most useful ways to make small parts is to 3D print them. On our 3D printer, an extruder puts plastic on the bed in layers and then it recools down into a solid object that's usually very strong and you can use for a lot of different purposes. It's just an example of bringing together different areas to create stuff for the future. There's a wealth of information out there, you just really have to go looking for it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed what we had out there. What were some of your favorites out there, Jess? Oh, I think I liked the, the pan that changed color. I think, you know, mood rings, that's old technology, but it's technology that's totally underrated, and I love to see it in a new application. Helen? I think mine would have to be the litter bug, so the bin with the nanobots. 
Uh, you know, I really am a big fan of recycling and any way that we can reduce waste, I think is a great idea. Also, nanobots. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'd personally have to go with the, the ski board thing, skis and snowboard in one, don't have to choose. I think it's pretty cool. It does sound pretty good, yeah. eh? Um, I'd have to say the, uh, the football would light up. I don't know, it's just really cool, except in that, that was a prototype. Um, it's actually much heavier than it looked. Of course, guys, these are all prototypes, what you saw today. And uh, of course, it's up to you guys to hopefully one day maybe make it a reality. Um, but uh, that's taken us to the final stage of this. But before we announce the winners, I want to show you some of the other fun and wacky ideas that you guys submitted. And uh, we've got a bunch up on the wall here as this one, the pet cleaning pet door. So it's like a car wash for your cat, cat or dog. <laughs> um, and it uh, seems pretty cool. I don't know how it really works, but it sounds great. Thank you, Lauren, for that submission. Uh, we've got Nota Nappies, which was uh, submitted by Kelly Horgan. And she uh, just, it's just like a Bluetooth uh, device and nappies, so you know where the, the little one is gone. She probably has a little sister or brother and is kind of sick of dealing with that. No one wants to put their nose in a smelly yeah. nappy. That's, that's <laughs> a great no, no. idea. <laughs> Uh, and we've got another one here. It's a good doggy collar from Thomas. And uh, essentially, I think how it works is a positive reinforcement kind of application where it's on his collar and uh, you can use your app to give it a treat if it's done something good. Um, so good. That's yeah. great. <laughs> Pretty cool, eh? There are so many things for dogs on, that were submitted, all these ideas. There's Pegasus Puppy, which Paige submitted for her dog Molly. She actually sent in the specific specific specifications so she could give her dog wings. Here we go. Pretty dog. awesome. What does it say? I would like Pegasus. <laughs> I like a Pegasus indie for my dog because I wanted to fly. <laughs> my dog's name is Molly and her badge. Yeah, that's great. I love it. Thank you, Paige. That's awesome. <laughs> I've also got this one's another one of my favorites uh, Toaster Lunchbox from Paul Davis. Looks really cool. Um, who wouldn't want a portable toaster at school? You'd be the coolest kid, no doubt. <laughs> I would definitely um, use that. And I see, like, he's got his little contraption. He's got sauces. He's got, oh, he's got condiments for days. Yeah, you'd be definitely <laughs> oh, running it. We've got a puzzle sorting machine by Elise, and we've got kangaroo shoes by Dieter, who's just, I guess, wanting to just be Bounce a, kangaroo. Around like a kangaroo. Very Aussie. We love it. Fair enough. All right. I've, uh, oh, I've just heard from backstage. We are ready to announce the winners, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the winner for best idea submitted by you guys is James. Wait. Drama, uh, who goes to school at Canberra in Bellevue Hill for the power nap sleeping bag. Really good idea, I yeah, think. Yeah, it's great. And the winning school is Seaford Secondary College in South Australia as they had the most number of creative entries. Congratulations, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Big thanks to Questacon, uh, to Samsung, and to you guys for all your great ideas. Keep on innovating.